Welcome to World News. Green energy's tailwinds blow the other way. Reuters breaking views. The global transition to renewable energy is becoming more expensive due to fractured supply chains and higher interest rates, which will test consumer and government resolve, according to Reuters breaking views. The push for clean energy has been driven by falling prices, cheap capital and supportive politicians, but the cost of wind power has since risen due to the higher price of steel. Moreover, the cost-effectiveness of lithium-ion batteries, used in electric vehicles, has stalled. Rising interest rates have increased the cost of capital, leading investors to re-evaluate existing projects and demand higher returns from new ones. RCMP civilian alleged to have leaked secrets to testify in own trial, eager for day in court, lawyer. The Globe and Mail. Cameron Ortiz, a high-ranking civilian at the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, RCMP will testify in his own defense when his trial for allegedly leaking classified information begins on October 2. Ortiz is accused of violating the Security of Information Act, as well as breach of trust and a computer-related offense. His arrest in 2019 caused significant security concerns within the RCMP and intelligence community. Ortiz had access to information from Canada's allies, both domestically and internationally and the charges against him were uncovered during an investigation into alleged internal corruption. We got a pilot in the house, missing F-35 drama captured on 911 call. The Sydney Morning Herald. An audio recording has been released of a 911 call made by a military pilot after his F-35 fighter jet crashed in South Carolina. The pilot, who parachuted to safety, repeatedly requested an ambulance, saying, Ma'am, I'm a pilot in a military aircraft, and I ejected. So I just rode a parachute down to the ground. Can you please send an ambulance? The fighter jet crashed after a malfunction, but kept flying for 100 kilometers after the pilot had ejected. The jet's flight control software would have worked to keep it steady if there was no longer a pilot's hands on the controls. Brazil's top court rules in favor of indigenous rights in land claim case. Al Jazeera. Brazil's Supreme Court has ruled in favor of indigenous rights in a landmark case that considered the constitutionality of establishing a time limit for making claims to ancestral territory. The court struck down the Marco Temporal argument, which would have required indigenous groups to prove they were on the land in question in 1988, when Brazil's current constitution was ratified, in order to assert a right to the territory. The decision is being celebrated by indigenous peoples and human rights organizations, but it is expected to have an impact on the future of Brazil's Bill 490, which seeks to limit new indigenous reservations and is supported by the agriculture lobby. Asian Games, swim star and teen skateboarder among 10 Chinese athletes to watch. South China Morning Post. China is expected to dominate at the Asian Games, with a squad of 886 entrants, including 36 Olympic champions. Swimmer Qin Haiyang, who won every breaststroke event at the World Championships and set a world record in the 200M, is among those expected to win multiple gold medals. China's table tennis team is also expected to perform well, with the question being whether they can win all seven gold medals on offer. Other Chinese athletes to watch out for include Su Yujia, swimming, Zhang Yufei, swimming, Zhou Jingyuan, gymnastics, Sunning Sha, table tennis, Chui Chenxi, skateboarding, Wang Zongyuan, diving, Huang Yuding, shooting, Yin running, golf, and Jing Qinwen, tennis. Australian XPM Turnbull says News Corp Chiefs Angertainment damaged the democratic world. The Guardian. Former Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has criticized Rupert Murdoch for doing enormous damage to the democratic world and creating an angertainment ecosystem that has divided the US. Turnbull, who has long been a critic of Murdoch, blames News Corp's promotion of climate denialism for his party's decision to remove him as leader. Turnbull argued that without Murdoch's media empire, the UK would probably not have exited the EU and Donald Trump would not have become president. Turnbull also accused the media empire of knowingly spreading lies about the 2020 election, which contributed to the January 6 insurrection. Ukraine's Zelensky to visit Canada, address Parliament. Reuters. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will visit Canada to meet with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and address the Canadian Parliament. Zelensky recently visited the United States, where he met with U.S. lawmakers and President Joe Biden. During his visit to Canada, Zelensky will also meet with Canadian business leaders to strengthen private sector investment in Ukraine. Canada has been a strong supporter of Ukraine and has provided military and financial assistance since Russia invaded in 2014. Trudeau said that Canada remains unwavering in its support for Ukraine's sovereignty and democracy. Zelensky's visits to the US and Canada come as Ukraine's counteroffensive against Russian forces continues.
Zelensky visiting Canada for first time since war started seeking to shore up support for Ukraine. Associated Press. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will address the Canadian Parliament on Friday as part of his efforts to garner support from Western allies in the country's war against the Russian invasion. Zelensky arrived in Ottawa on Thursday after meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden and lawmakers in Washington. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is scheduled to greet Zelensky and speak in Parliament. Zelensky and Trudeau will also meet with the local Ukrainian community in Toronto. Canada has provided significant financial support to Ukraine, with over $8.9 billion in aid. The Ukrainian president is seeking additional support as Ukrainian troops struggle to regain territory lost to Russian forces. Constitutional recognition and the voice fell flat in the liberal years. Ken Wyatt reveals why. The Sydney Morning Herald. Former Liberal MP Ken Wyatt has criticized his party's leaders and current MPs in a speech at an Indigenous Voice to Parliament forum in Perth. Wyatt quit the party in April in protest against its stance on the establishment of a voice to Parliament. Wyatt told the forum audience of approximately 500 that his former party had resisted constitutional recognition and the voice from early on. He recalled a conversation he had with former Prime Minister Tony Abbott, who supported constitutional recognition while in office but has since become an opponent of the indigenous voice. Wyatt also criticized former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, who now supports the voice. Wyatt said he warned then-Prime Minister Scott Morrison about the dangers of not pursuing a voice to Parliament at a dinner in Canberra. Morrison responded by saying, I don't think we can go forward. Wyatt criticized his former colleagues supporting the no campaigns if you don't know, vote no tagline. Queenstown declares state of emergency after flooding hits tourist hub. The Guardian. Queenstown, New Zealand has declared a state of emergency following heavy rain and flooding. The town had already issued a boil water notice due to concerns over water parasites. Over 100 people have been evacuated and residents and tourists have been advised to avoid the town center. Several highways have been closed due to flooding and landslides, and forecasters warn of further damage. The flooding comes after an outbreak of the parasite Cryptosporidium in the town, with more than a dozen cases identified. Queenstown Lakes Council is working to install a parasite filter, but it could take months. Yen under pressure as U.S. Treasury yields push over decade peaks. Reuters. The Japanese yen remains weak against the dollar as soaring U.S. Treasury yields weigh on the currency. The yen slipped to a 10-month low of 148.465 Japanese yen per dollar before recovering slightly to 147.6 Japanese yen. The Bank of Japan's BOJ, decision to keep its ultra-easy monetary policy unchanged is expected to be announced later on Friday. The yen has also been pressured by elevated U.S. Treasury yields, which reached multi-year highs in the previous session following the Federal Reserve's hawkish pause. Anwar says China's explanation of controversial map reassuring. Bloomberg. Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim has said he finds China's explanation of its new map, which appears to expand its claims over disputed land and waters in the South China Sea, reassuring. Speaking in an interview with Bloomberg Television, Ibrahim said China wants an amicable resolution over the disputed maritime claims and that all parties should not unnecessarily provoke each other. Malaysia is among several Asian countries that have objected to China's territorial claims in the South China Sea. Weapons charges dropped in 2018 raid on family compound in desert that turned up child's remains. The Toronto Star. Two firearms charges have been dismissed in the trial against the extended family arrested in the 2018 raid on a compound in New Mexico. The charges were dropped in preparation for the trial, which will now focus on terrorism and kidnapping charges against five defendants. The raid on the compound led to the discovery of a young boy's decomposed body. The defendants are accused of conspiracy to commit an offense against the U.S., providing material support to each other as potential terrorists, and conspiracy to kill U.S. government personnel. Kidnapping charges are pending against four defendants. Japan's factory activity shrinks, service sector growth slows in September, PMI. Reuters. Japan's factory activity contracted for the fourth consecutive month, while the service sector growth slipped to an eight-month low, according to a survey. The Ojibun Bank Flash Japan Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index, PMI, declined to 48.6 in September from 49.6 in August, remaining below the 50.0 threshold that separates contraction from expansion. Output fell to the lowest level since June and new orders dropped at the steepest pace in seven months. The services PMI dropped to 53.3 in September, marking the lowest level since January, with employment levels declining at the fastest pace since January last year. 
The composite PMI, which combines both manufacturing and service sector activity, sank to 51.8 in September from 52.6 in August. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email.